G'day, it's Jamie, and welcome to Where's My Yowie. Today, I'm reading a newspaper report about bunyips in the 1840s, so we'll get into it. This was published in Fremantle's The Messenger on Friday, the 18th of October, 1895, titled Some Old Time Stories. The following references to our old friend the bunyip published 50 years ago, will be read with interest today, when there are still people in our midst prepared to believe in the existence of such a creature. There are at least 18 different species of snake found in the settled Australian colonies, exclusive of two extraordinary, nay almost fabulous nondescripts, half serpent, half animal which it is confidently said to exist in the country. First in point of size is the diamond snake, which at times attains the extraordinary length of 18 feet. It is beautifully coloured and moves rapidly and noiselessly along. The black snake is next in point of size, the greatest length of any hitherto seen being 9 feet. In connection with the snake tribe in Australia, it may be well to mention here the two nondescript animals which are said to exist in Australia, but of which no living specimen has yet been secured by the white settlers. The first of these is called by the Aborigines the Bunyip or Kine Prati, and it is said to frequent deep water holes, pools, or rivers thickly surrounded with scrub. In many of the located parts of Australia, the natives have endeavoured from time to time to convey an idea to the whites of the existence of some very large animals, which frequently seized and devoured them when they resorted to deep water holes or particular streams. At first, many intelligent settlers considered the existence of such an animal as fabulous and supposed the idea to originate in the fact of the cramp affecting the natives when bathing and causing them to sink amidst vehement cries induced by pain. But the concurring testimony, not only of their Aborigines, but also of the European population, has of late caused this supposition to be exploded and the existence of the bunyip to be placed beyond doubt. In the course of 1846, the skull of an animal supposed to be the bunyip was found. It is that of a carnivorous animal, as ascertained from the teeth, and it possesses a long, large cavity for the brain, with a long, protruding bill which is unfortunately partly broken off. It would appear to be of the genus hitherto entirely unknown in any part of the globe. The skull is remarkable for the full development of the cerebral organs and the extreme elongation of the nasal organ. The length of the head is 16 inches. Some of the Aborigines describe the animal when alive as standing from six to seven feet in height and presenting the appearance in the upper portion of the body of a human figure with frightful features and a long flowing mane, while others assert that it has a, neck, a head and neck resembling those of an emu with a long hairy mane descending around it in flowing masses. In 1847, two gentlemen in the vicinity of Port Phillip Bay, whilst bathing, saw a large animal floating on the surface of the sea at a short distance from the shore. The only portion visible was the head and neck, which resembled those of a human being, but of a very dark colour, grey whiskers and black hair. However, various the accounts of the bunyip may be, there can be scarcely be a doubt that a strange and peculiar animal 
or what is more likely, two different descriptions of creature inhabit the deep and retired parts of rivers and water holes. Over the entire area of South Australia, Port Phillip and New South Wales, as far as they have been explored, the Aborigines all agree in describing some such creature, and they exhibit in places much reluctance to enter the water, particularly on parts of the Murray and Lower Murrumbidgee. Combined accounts would lead to the conclusion that there are two distinct creatures, one resembling the emu in its upper parts, the other exhibiting some resemblance to the human head. The latter is called by the Aborigines the Mindy, and the following description of it remarks upon it. Extracting from a Port Phillip paper on March 1847 may be found interesting. There is yet another brute of whose existence the Aborigines as firmly dissuaded as that of the Bunyip, but as his skull has not been yet picked up and submitted to the inspection of a medical board, we must not too hastily set him down among the things that actually live and be. The aim of this creature is the Mindy. He is described as a serpent of immense size and length with a black mane, which, by the by, is also bestowed upon the Bunyip. According to some of the Aborigines, his girth is that of a good-sized gum tree, and his length that of a spar fit for the main topmast of a 74, while others of a more enlarged conception declare him to be like a river or a road, a method of expressing their ideas of a thing without a beginning or end. And this circumstance has led some persons to suppose that the Mindy is the Aborigines god or devil. It is certain that they ascribe everything evil that may befall up them to its agency, and that they promise their enemies that they will endeavour to procure his assistance in effecting their annihilation. There are many who declare and will firmly maintain that they have actually seen the Mindy. From the description of such men, he is a serpent of about the size and shape of a large boa constrictor with a tuft like bunch of emu feathers on his head and the majority pronounce him to be perfectly harmless. When in the act of progressing, he carries his head in the air to the height of a shoulder of a middle-sized man, looking around him with all the stateliness and majesty of a serpent king. The Aborigines tell some rather out-of-the-way stories about this his sagacity and are particularly emphatic in describing the affection of the Lady Mindy for her young and imitating her low whining cry. The place of habitation of this interesting reptile is the Marlis, or as it is perhaps properly called in Mr. Ham's new chart, the Mally Scrub. His principal food, they say, consists of the egg of the Lowen, a bird frequenting the barren plains on and about the Lower Murray. Although from the manner in which they tell us they managed to destroy him, it seems that he is no objection to kangaroo rats, possum, emu, kangaroo, or even a tender bit of human. In order to kill him, they place food of the above description in as large quantities as they can produce in his way, and when he is completely surfeited, they stick him to the ground with large spears, right through him, and then set fire to the surrounding grass and scrub. And, to give an idea of the size and strength, they assert that when he, in his agony, he lashes his tail on the ground, every stroke may be heard for miles, like the report of musketry. The end. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, there was one bit they mentioned in there about, in 1847, two um, gentlemen that were bathing in Port Phillip Bay saw a large animal floating on the surface, and they said that the only bit was visible was the head and neck, and it resembled those of a human being, 
but very dark colour, grey whiskers and black hair. And I'm just curious uh, whether that was a yowie that they saw. But um, this whole bunyips thing has got me really interested because, like, you might ask, what is a bunyip? Well, I'd have to say everything. It's virtu to me, a bunyip is, if I haven't seen it before and I have no idea what it is, it's a bunyip. And even, like, yowies can be bunyips, and it's all very interesting. Okay, that's it from me. I'll get back to you all next time. Bye.